Hello and welcome back. Today we're gonna be harvesting some sunflowers, as you were probably expecting from the last video. Uh, actually, this is our third field. I've actually harvested the other ones, but we're having some trouble here. The sunflowers are yielding better than we expected, which is a good thing because we had a massive drought. We didn't get any water in the spring. And actually, right now, we are yielding much, much better than we expected and the stubble is green which means that the combine does not like it at all right now I'm going around 8 kilometers an hour and you can see that and uh, engine load is around 48% that's not that bad actually right now but when I started opening the end rows or the headlands whatever you call them I had a lot of trouble with the green stubble because when you're doing the headlands sometimes the sunflowers will be tilted to the side because of the wind. The wind always tilts the sunflowers or the corn in the headlands to the side and you have to run your header much lower to pick them up. So right now I'm not running it that low but I'm still kind of not even in the middle. I'm, I'm a bit over the middle so I can pick up the ones that are tilted and kind of fallen on the side. Uh, but when you're doing the end rows, you have to be pretty much closer to the ground. I can probably go a little bit faster than that, but I don't want to overload the, the pressing, pressing drum. Because that won't be good. You'll probably end up breaking the shear bolt on the drum. Uh, hold up, I gotta turn around. Okay, where was I? Uh, yes, the green stubble on the sunflower. Usually, that doesn't happen. You don't really get green stubble on your sunflowers, uh, especially when they are this late. We seeded them back in April, and now we are September, close to the middle of September. They should be absolutely dry right now, but that's not the case. So we're gonna have to deal with it any way or another. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my combine. This is a Class Lexion 480. It's a 2001 model. This is the biggest combine from the 4 Series, the 480. This is a APS hybrid. They call it hybrid. That basically means it has a threshing drum and two rollers. So it's not a rotary combine, it's a hybrid. You have your rollers. I think they are 4.2 meters in length, both of them. Uh, that's actually the same diameter roller as in the new Lexion 8900 But uh, 8900 has a much more powerful man engine. It's a man engine with 790 horsepower This one has a Mercedes engine a six-cylinder Mercedes engine that makes around 405 horsepower uh, It's pretty much a Very very good engine for this powerhouse. I mean 790 horsepower is kind of overkill for our operation, but you might be farming more acres more than we do, so you might find a use to it. But for our operation, this combine is pretty good. And it might seem to you from my last video that we have a lot of trouble with our combines, but uh, that's actually not true. These combines are uh, very good combines. We have a 460, it's a good combine. Uh, it's a walker combine, it's not a rotor combine, 460. What you saw the other day was basically us just preparing for harvest. Anytime right before harvest, any farmer knows this, the combines always have some issues that have to be fixed and some issues will spontaneously come to you and you just have to fix them. The combines are very good, they don't give us too much trouble even though they are you now 20 year old machines. So you have to put that into account when your machines can break down sometimes, but we never have major mechanical damage. Mostly it's just electronic damage. It's most of that can be easily fixed. Uh, this combine has a, a lot of capacity. I mean, I can run it a lot harder if I did not want to override the drum. It has a big uh, sieve area. I think it's the, the same diameter sieve area as the 8900. Basically, the only difference between this combine and the 8900 is the engine. It's much more powerful uh, and uh, 
loading rate. I think the 8900 can unload 180 liters in a second and this one can do around maybe 90, I don't know. I have to look up the specs on that so don't quote me on that. Here you can see because of the sun, right now I'm going around 8 kilometers an hour. The engine load is 52%. You see, this is a six row heater. This combine can handle a 12 row, no problem. But we don't have a 12 row, so we're gonna run with this one. This one actually allows you to go much faster. I've been getting up to 12 kilometers an hour, which is basically the top speed in second gear, uh, but not in these conditions. These conditions are not ideal at all. So you can't really go too fast right now. You're not gonna start losing out the back, but uh, you will look down the combine. Uh, you look down the engine, the rollers will be overloaded, the drone will be overloaded, uh, you might break your feeder house chain because of the green stubble, not because of the mass of the sunflower. Combines don't really like green stubble, especially in wheat. Uh, it's not so bad in the sunflowers, it handles it no problem. When I get to overload it, you hear the drum start beating around, but when you are in green wheat with green stubble then you can have big issues I mean big issues because you can plug up the combine you can plug up the rollers you can plug up the drum you can plug up the feeder cows you can plug up, plug up the chopper a lot of issues can arise there but uh, here you're not that bad I'm actually running my chopper right now most folks won't run that chopper when they're in some farms of corn but I prefer to chop up the stubble because actually the green stubble will rot much faster than the dry stubble because it's wet bacteria will get on it much faster, eat it and just rot it away and that's basically food for your ground we do conventional tillage so when we are done harvesting we will chop up we have a chopper for the straw then we will disc it, probably blow it I don't know, we might blow it, we might not and then we'll cultivate it and we see it back what we're hoping for is that this stubble will disintegrate until we get to see it again uh, that's our hope so I have this thing over here it's not the most accurate GPS but it does the job right now uh, we tried using it in the seeding but this tablet just doesn't have the GPS uh, accuracy that we need for seeding it's good for you know like uh, fertilizing or spraying it does the job it's good not that bad I mean it's for free what do you expect sorry I had to cut out there we had a problem with one of our trucks the Kamaz one that we had a gearbox issue but now it's been resolved uh, what I was saying we were running a lot of different combines we have two plus combines we have a case combine and we have a John Deere combine. We used to have a Nihoa combine. And to be honest, different combines perform better in different conditions. Right now we are harvesting sunflowers with our Lexian combine. And I think I can do probably better with our case combine. The axial flow system just works better in like thicker grains in like corn, sunflowers, chickpeas stuff like that but in cereals like wheat and barley or lexions do the best job they separate good they thresh good they don't have the issues the others come like that but uh, they're pretty loud when they take a lot of mess in I mean right now I'm taking in this green stubble and you can definitely hear the rollers and the drum when we use our John Deere combine you can take more cropping without feeling it, without the combine complaining about it. But it still can cause a lot of damage, so don't push it too hard. So, that's basically it. I'll see you next time.